Dala'il in one of the books of, of the Dala'il, he mentions that when the news reached the Quraysh about the Bay'at al-Ridwan, they trembled. They got scared. And what does that show you? A small group of Muslims, right? Un, not unarmed, but not as armed as well as they are tired and whatnot, but they have Iman and they can cause the mighty tribe of the Quraysh to tremble in their houses. They got scared and this was why they decided we need to negotiate before they do something. This was why they decided we need to have some treaty. And so they sent an official delegation uh, and initially they sent somebody by the name of Mikraz ibn Hafs. Mikraz ibn Hafs and it appears that this was just a quick uh, sending. They hadn't really thought things through in that Mikraz did not really have a plan or an agenda. And when the Prophet ﷺ saw Mikraz, he said to the Sahaba that this Mikraz, Mikraz is a evil man, Rajulu Su, he's a, he's a bad person and this is not going to be working for us. And when Mikraz approached, he and the process and began negotiating, but there was simply no terms for negotiation. Each uh, Mikraz was giving conditions and whatnot that simply were not acceptable to anybody. And as they were talking, and the negotiation was completely stalled. Then from the distance appeared the final delegation. And this was a delegation that would solve basically the problems. And there were three people in that delegation. And the senior person amongst them and the main person was none other than Suhail ibn Amr. Suhail ibn Amr. And when the Prophet saw Suhail, he said, قَدْ جَاءَ Suhail, سَهُولَ عَلَيْكُمْ أَمْرُكُمْ Suhail has come, and Suhail comes from the verb Sahula, and Sahula means to make things easy. So Suhail has come, Allah has made things easy for you now. Through Suhail, Sahl will be reached. And Sahl means ease and opening. And this leads us to another theological point, and that is the issue of good omens. Good omens, positive omens. And this one phrase shows us what does it mean to have a good omen. Our Prophet ﷺ said that there's no such thing as superstitions, as, uh, as bad omens. لا عدوى ولا طيرة ولا هامة. All of these uh, uh, bad omens, like in our, in our world, bad omens are like Friday the 13th or a black cat or uh, breaking glass or an upside down horseshoe or all of these things, you know. And then good omens are four leaf clover. All of these things that our culture is familiar with. And of course, every culture has its, these types of things. So the Prophet ﷺ said all of these things don't exist. They don't even exist. And in one hadith he said, That believing in omens is a type of shirk. If you believe a black cat is going to harm you, if it crosses your path, you have some serious theological issues, really, you know. So uh, the Prophet said, this is all shirk, there's nothing like this. Then he said, But I like positive optimism. I like good omens. So he, they asked him, what do you mean by al-fa'al? Al-fa'al is the Arabic term. What do you mean by al-fa'al? He says, a good word or a good phrase that somebody hears. This the hadith is in Bukhari. Now, what does this mean? So let's give an example that is easier or, or, or clearer to understand. A good omen is to read in, there's two conditions. Number one, a positive sign. A positive message. Number two, that is linked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If these two conditions are met, then a good omen is recommended. And it is something that is a part of our religion. And a good omen is nothing other than being optimistic in Allah. That's really what it is. A good omen is being optimistic in Allah. And an example of a good omen that perhaps our culture uh, will understand and I can assure you this example has never, never been found in any book of fiqh because this is a culturally relevant example. If one of us is making dua on a, uh, a cloudy day and we're making dua, we're making dua, we're making dua. Then we open our eyes and we look out the window and we see a beautiful rainbow. If we say, this is a sign from Allah that I should cheer up and that my dua will be answered. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's good. 
The Prophet said, I like al fa'al, yu'jibuni al fa'al. Why is there nothing wrong with that? Because shouldn't we already be thinking that Allah will give us what we want? Optimism and iman. Correct? So anything that boosts that optimism, anything, is something that is ja'iz, it is mustahab in fact. You should always be optimistic. Right? So anything that you read as a sign, as a positive sign, right? Suppose it was cloudy, you, 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 know, you make dua and the sun comes. So the sun is a type of brightness. So your heart always feels you know, happier when you see the sun after a cloudy day. It's like your heart goes up. If you say, oh, this is a sign that my problems will diminish like the clouds and the help of Allah like the sun will come in upon me. No problem. It's okay. In fact, it's good. يُعْجِبُنِي الْفَعْلِ And one of the examples of the seerah of the Prophet is exactly here. Suhail comes from the root that means to make things easy. And when Suhail came, the Prophet said, Suhail has come, Allah has sahula, Allah has made things easy for you. So he derived a positive omen that khalas, this is good news now. That Suhail is coming and our matters will be made easy for us. And in fact, that's exactly what happened. That when Suhail came, finally the impasse was broken, right? The multi-days keep on going, finally it is uh, broken. And there are so many other things that are uh, said. Uh, one of the examples that one of the Sahaba gave. So there's a name in Arabic called Wajid. And Wajid means Wajada, the one who finds. So someone, one of the Sahaba said, imagine you lost uh, or you lose something and you're trying to find it. Then somebody calls out to his friend, Ya Wajid, Ya Wajid. And you hear that and... You take this as a good sign, I will be the wajid. Do you, does that make sense to you? I will find what I want to find. Because wajid linguistically means the one who finds. And somebody's calling his friend who's called wajid, oh, hey wajid, come here. And then the man who's trying to find something, a lost item, he says, this is a sign from Allah, I'm going to be the wajid now, I will find my thing. This is an example, again, in our culture, I give you some other examples. My point being, whatever you read in a positive sign, that Allah is sending a positive sign to me, that inshallah my problems will be solved, inshallah my dua will be answered, inshallah my sickness will be cured, whatever positive sign, two conditions. Number one is positive, there is no such thing as negative. So if you're making dua, and then there's a thunder, don't think that this is a sign that Allah has rejected my dua. Doesn't work that way, okay? There's no opposite, okay? And then of course the second sign or the second condition, you must link it to Allah. And this is one of the biggest problems of all of our bad luck things that we have. It's not even linked to Allah Azza wa Bad luck from a cat crossing your path? Come on. I mean, how foolish is this, right? Where is that coming from? So, only positive and then linked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In any case, there's a lot of fiqh and theology to derive from Hudaybiyah, so I have to go into these tangents. Now back to Hudaybiyah. Where were we? Okay, so Suhail so comes.